The purpose of today's video is to answer a question that was posed by one of our newer cowboy shooters who's been to a couple of matches, borrowed some different guns, owns a couple of different types of single action revolvers about the proper way to load the revolver, which we do prior to the stage at the loading table. So I have a couple of different um, types of revolvers today to talk about the, uh, the methods for loading them properly and the particular challenges that a Rimfire 22 revolver uh, gives. And so the first place to start, we've got the shooter's handbook here. And I was explaining to someone today that the handbook has something called uh, stage conventions, which are uh, sort of default settings for what we do. And then includes safety conventions, which are unlike the regular stage conventions are things that cannot be overridden by stage instructions. So these safety conventions are always applicable. And under the safety and handling conventions for revolvers, it says six shot revolvers, which is mostly what we use, may be loaded at the loading table with a maximum of five rounds and the hammer lowered and resting on the empty chamber. Well, why do we do that? It's a six shooter, you might say. Why only load five? Well, that rule is largely based upon the design of the single action army, the Colt single action army, the Colt peacemaker. Um, many of the revolvers that we use are um, modern replicas uh, of the, the Colt peacemaker. And one of the uh, drawbacks of that old design is, and this revolver is a, uh, yeah, that's a modern reproduction, but it's pretty faithful to the Colt. And one of the attributes is, it has a fixed a firing pin attached to the hammer, and this is called a fixed firing pin. You see it, it wiggles, it floats a little bit, but it, um, it is attached to the hammer. And when the hammer is lowered to rest, the uh, firing pin is resting directly on the primer, that's the center part of the cartridge that ignites the cartridge. Uh, it is actually in contact with the primer of the cartridge in the top chamber. Um, so much so, I don't know that you'll be able to see it on the camera, but if you were to look through um, this gap between the back of the cylinder and what we call the recoil shield, you may be able to see that firing pin tip protruding there. So that's where that will actually rest. And if you load this gun um, or a similar type of gun with uh, six rounds, um, it would not take much of a blow to the hammer to set that cartridge off. Um, now there is, as some might say, well, wait a minute though, there's a, the first click is a safety notch that draws that firing pin, the hammer back so that the firing pin is not in contact with the cartridge. That's true, but it's not much of a safety. The internal parts are rather fragile. And if you were to drop this gun, it could shear off the top of the trigger that acts as the sear or shear off the notch on the hammer and still cause the gun to fire. So the um, recommended way to carry a revolver like this is with five rounds with a hammer down on the empty chamber. And that's what the SAS rules require. Now, you might say, but, Corpus, I have a Ruger, and a new model Ruger revolver, just confirm that's clear, um, operates differently. It looks a lot, kind of like a Colt revolver, but under the hood, its uh, internal parts are different, and it has what's called a transfer bar ignition. That, the bar that you see that raises up when I cock the hammer, um, is, it, there's no firing pin on the hammer. The firing pin is a floating pin that's inside the frame that's under the uh, top of that the bar right there. And so um, the firing pin is never hit by the hammer. What happens is when you hold the trigger down, the uh, hammer, when it falls, will slap that transfer bar, and, and which will then in turn slap the firing pin and cause the gun to fire. But if I'm not holding the trigger back, you can see I'm releasing the trigger now. And as that hammer goes down, the transfer bar is withdrawn and then the hammer sits on the frame. And so this gun is perfectly safe, was engineered in fact, uh, to overcome the limitations of the old Colt design um, so that it's fully safe, uh, safe, fully loaded. 
you could you know beat on this with a ball peen hammer with a live round under that hammer and it, and it physically cannot go off so um why do i have to handicap myself with a ruler well it's because the safety rules are to protect everybody regardless of the type of gun and also it wouldn't be fair if i was able to load six rounds and someone else only five so the same rule applies whether you have um, an original Colt design type gun or a Ruger or some other modern uh, revolver that has some other passive safety that would make it what we call drop safe. So we still have to load it with five rounds. Now, there are a couple ways that, that you can do that. Um, um, some people prefer to put five rounds into the cylinder and then roll the cylinder around to make sure that they don't have a high primer or a cartridge that's sort of sticking in the chamber, um, which would cause the, um, the primer or the head of the, uh, of the cartridge to drag against the recoil shield. So they'll do that, but then they've got to, um, you know, stop in a place where they have an empty um, under the uh, hammer. So the traditional way, let's start with a Colt. That's the older version. And um, the recommended way to load this gun um, to have it in the proper condition under SAS rules or you know, proper condition for safe carrying loaded is sometimes referred to as the cowboy load. And so what you do on these revolvers to load them, you have to uh, pull the hammer back to a half cock position. Um, sometimes these guns, the old Colts, um, they make four clicks when you cock them. So first click is the um, safety notch. Second click is the half cock, which frees the cylinder to spin for loading and unloading. The next click you hear is the locking bolt going into place to lock the cylinder uh, in, in the correct position. And then finally, when the cocking notch is engaged, you get that fourth click. So some people used to say that it spelled its name, C-O-L-T. There's some modern Uberti revolvers that have been out for a few years that have a Cattleman II system where they actually um, eliminated that first click. So sometimes those are called three-click guns. Um, and those are interesting, and maybe we'll cover those in another video. But regardless of the number of clicks, if it's a Colt-style gun with a half-cock, so you, again bring the uh, hammer to half cock, open your loading gate. These guns load one cartridge at a time, the Colt style guns and the Ruger carried over that. So anyway, the way you do the cowboy load, and we're, we're doing these demonstrations with fired cases, not uh, live ammo. So you load one, load the first chamber, you load one, skip one, skip that next chamber, then load four, So that would be our fifth one that we put in, right? Okay, you close your gate, or you can close your gate now, or we'll go ahead and do it. But um, then you haul the hammer all the way back to full cock and then carefully lower it. And if you've done that sequence correctly, you have an empty chamber under the hammer. Um, and by the way, if you ever handle one of these guns, you have it at half cock, don't lower it from half cock to full rest. Always go to full cock and then to rest. And that helps the, you know, the locking bolt out of the way so that you don't scratch up your ring around the cylinder. Um, that's the proper way to do it. Now, obviously, if you were loading this gun and you had five live rounds in it or any live rounds in it, you would be obviously very careful in the way that you handle it. Um, and uh, when you, you know, lower that hammer, obviously you're keeping it in a safe direction. And our loading tables in Cowboy Action Matches are, are placed in a way so that you're pointing down range or in a side berm so that there's never anybody in front of you if something went awry. But um, again, hopefully you can see a gap between the back of the cylinder and the recoil shield and you can see daylight uh, in there because there's no cartridge in that top chamber. Um, and the reason you can do that is, and I'll show you this in a minute, let's open the loading gate. And if we start to cock it, put on half cock. Okay, you see there's that empty chamber. If you couldn't see it 
from the recoil shield, you can see now that that is in, in fact an, an empty. And just real quickly, the way you unload it is the same way. Gravity will help the cases fall out. And if not, you can poke them out with a spring-loaded ejector. If you ever wonder what that other little thing that looks like a second barrel is, it's simply the ejector housing. And so that's how you show clear, uh, by the way, at the unloading table after you shot the gun, you unload it that way. And then you can, again, pull the hammer back. All right, well, the reason um, you can see those um, cartridge head cases is because there there is that gap. And that gap is there because they're, the clearance between the back of the cylinder and recoil shield is of a thickness that the rim of the cartridge case uh, is visible. All right, so the, um, and I don't know that you can really see it really well on the video, but when we drop it in there, you can probably see from that angle that the rim stops, the, the, the count, uh, uh, chamber's not counterboard, so that rim sits on the surface, if you will, of the cylinder. So you have to have clearance, right, for that to be able to go around. All right, so I think that's pretty clear. I hope it is. Um, with a Ruger, <clears throat> again, we'll check clear. There is no um, half cock or safety notch on this hammer. It is either at rest or it's cocked. There's no other position for the hammer. And when Ruger redesigned this, their single action revolvers in 1973 uh, to create this new model, that's the name that they give to the ones with the transfer bar ignition, um, having done away with the clicks on the hammer, or half cock position, the way that you load and unload the Ruger is simply to open the loading gate. And that will free your cylinder for loading and unloading. Okay, the Ruger uses a very similar load one, skip one, load four, with one small change. So this is a 38 357 revolver. So the cases are smaller, but same thing. We open the loading gate, load one, and you can see, again, that is not counterboard, so that case head stops and sits um, proud of the back of the cylinder. So load one, skip one, then we'll load the second, the third, the fourth, and the fifth round, if these were live rounds. All right, now, this is important. You do not touch the cylinder yet, you've got to close the loading gate. That will allow the uh, bolt to lock into place when you rotate the cylinder. If you don't do this, if you turn the cylinder out of place before you close the loading gate, you can very easily go past the empty chamber that you want to be under the hammer. So after you close the loading gate, you rotate the cylinder until it stops. And again, I don't know that you'll be able to see this from the camera angle, but you can see daylight between the recoil shield and the location of that top chamber. That's what you want. Um, in some matches, there is a loading table officer who will observe you loading your guns and may ask to look at the side of your gun to look for that daylight to confirm that you have indeed loaded the revolver correctly and have it ended up with a live round under the chamber. And we will just open this up again, free the cylinder and turn it and show you this way that that empty chamber is where we wanted it to be. So that's a little bit of difference in the Ruger, but it's basically the same thing. And then you can observe and confirm, you know, from looking in the side. Again, because those rims sit on the uh, rear of the cylinder and allows you to see the cartridge cases in place. Now, um, in most matches these days, we don't have a dedicated loading table officer. The custom is that uh, there's usually, you know, two or three um, shooters at the loading table loading at the same time. And we sort of spot for each other, you know, and, and you can ask someone to look at your gun. And of course, if you're a new shooter, we will typically have a mentor sitting like sitting on like an owl on your shoulder watching everything you do and helping you. Um, and that's what we do. But for more experienced shooters, we, we check one another. But the important point is it's the shooter's responsibility to load the guns correctly. It's on the shooter. It's the shooter that gets penalized if there's a problem. 
and it's the shooter's responsibility to know how to do it right and to do it right every time. If you were to leave the loading table with a live round under the chamber, uh, rather under the hammer uh, of your revolver, that is a failure to follow loading and unloading procedures and is a stage of disqualification. If I had done that with my Ruger, if I'd misindexed the cylinder or put six rounds in it, um, you know, it's a violation, but it's actually not literally unsafe because the gun, as I say, is, is safe, fully loaded. If I were to drop it or it got a blow on the hammer, it would not go off. If I were using a Colt style revolver, and again, I'm required to lower that hammer all the way to rest at the loading table. If there's a live round under it, that is a potentially hazardous situation. So we want to do it right. And occasionally we'll see a shooter that will go up to the line, draw the revolver, cock it, pull the trigger, and it goes click, which is can be an indication that they've not loaded it properly. And more importantly than avoiding a violation, you want to be safe. I mean, we always say, priorities are in shooting sports, be safe and have fun. And so we need to be safe. And so we wanted to cover that. All right, well, it's actually pretty easy with these centerfire revolvers because of the way the uh, cylinders are cut and gives you that ability to visually confirm that you've done it right. Now, 22 long rifle rimfire revolvers are available in single action revolvers. SAS rules say that um, uh, 22s can be used only by shooters who are aged 13 and under, what we call the buckaroo, buckaret category. Um, everybody else is required to use center fires from 32 to 45 caliber in their revolvers, but um, local matches have flexibility and with ammunition and primers being in short supply, many local matches, including Greenville Gunfighters, and our neighbors, Belton Bushwhackers and um, uh, Moonshine and Dark Corner in Northern Greenville County, have all announced that they will allow shooters of any age to shoot 22 caliber revolvers and rifles if they want to. And it can be an economical thing to do because the ammunition is a lot less expensive and many of the guns are available, especially the revolvers, are a lot less expensive than the center fires these days. Um, this is a Ruger Wrangler which often can be found, you know, it's le less than MSRP. I mean, I've seen them on sale for $175, $180. And there's a Heritage Rough Rider revolver, which is kind of um, uh, very, it, which is very similar to this older uh, German revolver that I have here, um, the same basic design. And these are on sale for really, really, really low prices sometimes. And so they can be very economical to pick these up. This is a way to get started. And so we, we're seeing more and more people show up with the rim fires. Well, um, let's talk about what's different with these rim fire revolvers. And, and first of all, I'll say that they, you still are basically dealing with two different action types. The Heritage and similar revolvers like this one um, are a, a Colt type, uh, type design, which means you've got a hammer um, with a safety notch, half cock position, and a full cock with four clicks. So we'll put this gun on half cock, open the loading gate, and we see that's freed our cylinder to turn so we can load it and unload it. And it only turns one way, it doesn't back up. So you can load this gun just like the Colt style gun, load one, skip one, load four, pull the hammer all the way back, lower it to full rest, and you should be, that's the cowboy load, and you should be uh, on that um, empty uh, chamber. You'll notice this gun does not have a firing pin mounted on the hammer. It is a floating firing pin mounted in the frame, but even so, um, it has the same drawback of the Colt that when that uh, hammer is all the way down, it pushes that firing pin forward in contact with the um, rim, where the primer is on, on rim fire 22 long rifle uh, cartridge. So that is not safe for carry fully loaded. Uh, the Heritage guns have a manual safety built into them, um, but again, that's not what we use in SAS. We don't rely on a manual safety. We rely on the safety of the empty chamber. All right, Ruger makes um, 
a, a number of um, rimfire single action revolvers as well. The single six is actually the first single action revolver that Ruger ever made, and they still make that. But they make this very budget friendly gun now called a Wrangler. Um, and um, it is similar to my, uh, it's a big cousin here, uh, the Ruger and the Vaquero, in that it has no, I'm just gonna safety check it right quick, but it has no uh, um, safety notch, no half cock. Uh, the cylinder, is, uh, rather the hammer is either cocked or uncocked. It has that transfer bar ignition. So this gun is safe. Um, fully safe as you are handling it. Um, it's it's drop safe, I should say, with it being fully loaded. But like um, the Vaquero, you free the cylinder for loading and unloading by simply opening that loading gate. And you can do the same sequence that we did with the other Ruger, load one, skip one, load four, close the gate, and, well, I didn't have it. Let's just do that again. This is pretend that we loaded and then we close the loading gate and then we could turn the uh, cylinder till it stops and then we're in a good place. Well, here's the problem though with the rimfire revolvers and, and you can see this perhaps if I open up the uh, loading gate on this Ruger. Now I've got in here, that is another fired, empty fired case. This is a 22 long rifle case. And I hope you can see this but when I insert this, pretend it's a cartridge, into the chamber, the chambers are countersunk into the face of the cylinder, which means that the, um, the, there's no rim sitting above, no part of the cartridge case sitting above the face of that cylinder. And what does that mean? That means that this cylinder is, is almost right up against the recoil shield with no gap. There's a little, there has to be a hairline gap in there, but not anything close to what we had on the center fires. So you cannot look into the side, into the side of this revolver and see anything. You can't see daylight up here and you can't see the, um, the rims of the cartridges that are already loaded because they're countersunk. They're pushed all the way in and they're out of your view. So you can't verify from looking at the side where the empty chamber is on this revolver. It may be totally empty. It may be loaded with three, six, five, no way to verify. Um, and that's a problem. There's also another, there's a centerfire gun called a EAA a Bounty Hunter, which um, is a centerfire gun. They make a rimfire. The centerfire gun has a little um, ridge around the back of the cylinder and it also blocks your view of the cartridge heads, and that's kind of the same issue. So if you're using one of these revolvers, you're a new shooter, and you want to be safe, especially if you have a you know, heritage-type gun, Colt-style lock work, and, and you want to be in compliance with the rules. So how do you do that? Well, here's one fix that some people have used. And on the Ruger, just rotate that around, and there's empty case, but here we've kind of designated one chamber as sort of our designated empty. And there's a little yellow plastic plug in that chamber, just as a visual reminder that that's one that we're not going to load. So if I wanted to load this gun for a SAS competition, here's what we would do. So we know where that empty chamber is. And I have, let's put that under where it belongs. Oh, and another issue with the Ruger that I didn't mention a moment ago. On the Heritage and on these other revolvers as they come out of the box, you can only turn the cylinder one way. Click, 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 and it won't go backwards. The Wrangler is designed with a reverse free spin pawl, they call it, which means you can rotate the cylinder either way. So you can't just go click, 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 and make sure like you could on a Colt style gun and make pretty sure that you're loading it correctly. So what I've done here, not very artfully, is flanking that designated empty chamber. I've got a couple of just little white paint marks on the uh, back of the cylinder. And I tried to get that into the little groove that's machined into the back. Uh, on the Heritage, I've done, Heritage, 
heritage type revolver. I've done the same thing by putting a little paint mark um, in the cylinder flutes, flanking what I intend to be my empty chamber. And the empty chamber has got a visual on the back, just a little mark of paint there. It doesn't have a plug in it. But the same, you see what we're doing here. So if a loading table officer or another shooter or just me wanting to verify that I did this right, I know where my designated empty is, right? So I can start here with load one. I won't put the cases back in there, but you get the idea. Load one, skip one, one, two, three, four. Now, if I followed the same procedure that I did on the other Ruger and closed the loading gate and then rotated the cylinder until it stopped, it should be in the correct position with that empty chamber under the hammer. Remember, I can't see the cartridge heads, but I can see these paint marks or some other mark that you would put on the, on the revolver, on the cylinder. Same thing over here. If I loaded that, let's see, skip, skip one, one, two, three, four, cock the hammer and lower it. Again, I've got this visual reference in the cylinder flutes, this visual reference just on the paint marks so that I know, and someone who is maybe looking over my shoulder to assist me will know that I have got that in the correct position and we don't have a live round under the hammer. Um, and you can you could do this a number of different ways. I suppose you could take a punch and, and dimple it, um, but you know, a little bit of paint or a Sharpie or what have you will do just as well and it's not a permanent uh, alteration. But it's a way to get around that design limitation of those countersunk um, chambers preventing you from doing the usual visual that we're used to doing with the center fire revolvers. So that, you know, and we're gonna have new shooters shooting these rim fires and kids in the buckaroo category. And, you know, if there's anybody that needs that extra level of safety, that extra level of confidence, I mean, I think these guns are great and if we can make them that much easier to use and give our shooters confidence, give the people that are supervising and scoring these competitors confidence that they're gonna be safe. It just benefits everybody. So sorry for the length of uh, the video, it was a little bit long, but I thought it was important to cover this in, in some depth. And it's something that you can verbally describe to somebody, but to see uh, and if you can do, put your hands on it, do it yourself, it's so much easier to understand what we're talking about. And it's also important to understand why we do this and what the actual, you know, safety limitations are of the design of some of these guns. I'll try to remember to put a link in the description of the video uh, to uh, a video made by Hickok 45 some years ago, where he actually demonstrated with a prime case how easy it is to accidentally set off um, a live round that's under the hammer of a Colt style gun. So um, uh, you might want to take a look at that. But um, thanks for spending the uh, time to join us today and we will see you on the range.